I'm Riley Chow. I'm here with Zach Laws and Luca Gilliberti, and we are here to discuss two exciting categories at the 71st Primetime Emmy Awards. We're here to talk about outstanding writing for a limited series or movie and the equivalent directing category. But this year it's exciting because we actually have no movies nominated and we also have no anthologies nominated. So it's really just best writing and directing for a mini series. And we also have the exact same five shows nominated in both categories. Between these five shows, they made six submissions in each category, and they managed to fill all six slots in each. So we've got uh, Escape at Janamora, and we have Fosse Verdon, and A Very English Scandal, When They See Us, and Chernobyl. So in writing, we've got two episodes of Escape at Janamora, and in directing, we have two episodes of Bossy Verdon. Uh, so first of all, uh, I guess, Luca, how do you feel about the field? Um, I don't know, maybe how Sharp Objects was snubbed, et cetera. Yeah, the Sharp Objects snub, first of all, it really disappoints me because I personally really liked the show. I liked the direction by Jean-Marc Vallée and I really liked uh, the writing. And given that Jean-Marc Vallée just won two years ago, I think his snub is uh, pretty surprising. And the nominations did come out before this whole Big Little Lies season two uh, controversy sort of hit the internet. So it does really surprise me, but I do think we have a solid lineup here of uh, nominees. And it doesn't surprise me that we have the same shows in both categories because that's what this new Emmy system or this new voting system has practically enabled, uh, where you just, you know, check off your favorite shows everywhere and then it results in, uh, you know, the series nominees being nominated or shortlisted in the writing, directing, acting, and below the line categories. I mean, I was kind of wondering if we should just roll this into a uh, conversation about limited series since, you know, we do have four of the same five shows being nominated, just swap out a very English scandal for Sharp Objects. Uh, Zach, what, what do you make of Sharp Objects and A Very English Scandal swapping places? It wasn't very surprising to me that uh, Sharp Objects was snubbed in writing and directing, considering the fact that uh, the show aired over a year ago, and uh, for all intents and purposes, most of the buzz seemed to just be kind of centered around Amy Adams and Patricia Clarkson. Uh, as opposed to on uh, Jean-Marc Vallée and uh, uh, and uh, Gillian Flynn. And, uh, so I feel like uh, what's really surprising, though, is that Sharp Objects managed to get into Best Limited Series over a very English scandal, which they seem to like more uh, when you consider that it got in for directing and for writing and, of course, for Hugh Grant and Ben Wishaw. Um I, I think that's probably the most bizarre thing about it is just the fact that uh, Sharp Objects still managed to get in um, over a very English scandal. Uh, my theory about it is that we have this British block that we're always kind of talking about mm -hmm. uh, in jest. And I think the British block kind of only exists above the line. So last year we yeah. saw Patrick Melrose get in to series and it got lead actor, directing, writing. Um, and casting, which is primarily voted on by directors, and it got nothing else. And a few yeah. years ago, we saw um, The Honorable Woman, same thing, where it's just series, lead actress, writing, directing, nothing else. So I thought that would be enough to carry um, a very English scandal. In So since we have the same nominees in pretty much all three categories, it makes sense to me to predict the same winner in all three categories since they're, you know, even matchups. But you two are predicting when they see us for both uh, series and I believe directing, but you're going Chernobyl for writing. What gives? Zach. <laughs> well, all right. I think that, uh, first of all, I mean, these awards rarely go together. Um, you know, even when we have a big sweeper like a People versus O.J. Simpson or uh, Big Little Lies, you know, they tend to split the writing and directing awards. I don't quite know why that is, other than perhaps maybe people really are paying attention to, um, you know, the to the different skills 
uh, in each of these crafts. Um, but anyway, I think that when people look at the achievement of what Craig Mazin did with Chernobyl, uh, writing all five of these episodes, the amount of research that he had to do, uh, being able to take all of this kind of scientific mumbo jumbo and turn it into uh, comprehensible dialogue, making it dramatic, making it suspenseful, making it uh, moving and all of that stuff. I think that people could really go for that. Um, and that's not to, of course, denigrate uh, the achievement that Ava DuVernay did as a writer on When They See Us, but I think that people are going to look at that more as an achievement of directing, um, simply because she's more famous in that regard. Uh, and also because of the fact that, you know, because she used other co-writers for each episode, she could only submit one, uh, or she was only nominated for one, as opposed to Mason, who's nominated for all five episodes. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Luca? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. I think those are the exact same reasons why I have Chernobyl taking writing and When They See Us taking uh, directing. The only thing that gives me pause about uh, Craig Mazin winning writing is that since 2016, so in the last three years, the writing category has gone to an individual episode So for writing a single episode instead of writing the entire season. So uh, in the last two years, mm. we had Black Mirror win um, writing. And the year before that, it was American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson for Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And Chernobyl, of course, as Zach already said, was written, all five episodes were written by Craig Mazin. So that does give me some pause, but nevertheless, I'm predicting him just because for the reasons that Zach mentioned. The show was so well-respected, and much of the success to the show can be attributed to his writing, his research, and the way he balanced, you know, factual evidence, presenting factual evidence uh, with, you know, providing enough emotional beats to make the show tangible or to make the storyline tangible uh, for people, especially those that weren't necessarily alive when the when, you know, it actually happened in 1986 for people like me. So I think there's a lot of respect for the script. And while his name isn't on the ballot because writers names aren't on the ballot, I do think a lot of people will um, respect the overall achievement for the show. I think that you two have kind of an idealized view of the Emmys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that it would be nice if, you know, we could give Chernobyl a win here, we could give When They See Us a win here. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the way that the ballot is really set up because, uh, Nope. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, the writers are voting for writing and series, and the directors are voting for director and series. I think that kind of the way us as prognosticators think about it is like, okay, well, this one's more of a writing achievement, so it'll win writing. And this one's more of a directing achievement, it'll win directing. But for the voters, they only get to vote in one or the other. So I think they're just going to pick their favorite. I think we saw this uh, with Game of Thrones a few years ago where everyone said, okay, you know, Mother's Mercy with the, you know, good girl with the bad or whatever line, and then uh, Battle of the Bastards the year after, where they seemed like they were much heavier directorial achievements, but they ended up taking writing as well over more writerly uh, achievements like the Mad Men finale or the Mr. Robot pilot. I think that, yeah, the, the Emmys are just going to go with their favorite here. Um, and since we have some consensus about it being when they see us as the favorite overall, uh, it follows that it would be the favorite here. Now, in the last few years, we have seen splits with Black Mirror, but I think we don't really have a Black Mirror in this lineup because Black Mirror was never going to be, you know, People versus O.J. Simpson or Big Little Lies or wh whatever uh, heavyweight limited series contender is up against. It was very clearly like a writerly choice. Whereas this year, we are devoid of all those kinds of choices in the writing category. We just have pretty much the exact same lineup as a series category. So I, I was thinking uh, before nominations that this would easily go to David Milch if he were nominated. Mm -hmm. And if Black Mirror had been nominated again, I'd watch out for that. But I think since we don't have that kind of wild card in the bunch here, we'll just go back to the kind of default state, which is kind of an all of Caterage style sweep. 
I think, though, the thing that um, you, you're not wrong, right? Um, that's why I have When They See Us in number two in writing, um, even ahead of something like, say, A Very English Scandal, which uh, I think a lot of people appreciate the, the achievement of, of that writing. Um, what makes me think that there is a chance for Chernobyl to win here and to win in some other categories as well is the fact that, you know, this show led the nominations uh, amongst the limited series. Um, yeah. It's wildly popular, even, not just with critics, but with audiences as well. I mean, it is, I think, the top rated television show of all time on IMDb or something crazy like that. Sure um, so, tied, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, for, for a five hour program about people's skin peeling off from radiation poisoning, <laughs> that is quite an achievement. Um, it makes me think that perhaps Chernobyl is going to give when they see us a run for its money Absolutely. in this category and in some other ones as well. Uh, now, when they see us has got more, uh, I think, uh, sort of uh, Emmy narrative behind its yeah. sales, right? So it, it makes it a little more likely to sweep than Chernobyl, but at the same time, I think that Chernobyl is going to win some major prizes and writing would be one of them. And let's not forget, I mean, you mentioned David Milch. Uh, Craig Mazin is a, a longtime writer yeah. uh, for film. Uh, he's very respected. Uh, he's very popular. Um, you know, he hosts this podcast with John August that a lot of people in the industry love. And uh, I, I mean, I could see him kind of Filling that sort of David Milch uh, type of, you know, like the writer's writer. Um, in the same way that uh, Charlie Booker from Black Mirror or DV Dave Vincentis from People vs. OJ Simpson is that kind of like writer's writer. I just want to clarify that this is uh, Craig Mazin's eighth writing credit since 2000. So his other credits are The Huntsman, Winter's mm -hmm. War. The oh, don't part you three. do this, Riley. The Hangover <laughs> Part 2, Superhero Movie, Scary Movie 4, and Scary Movie 3. Uh, but, but there is, you know, a narrative, I guess, that, you know, look how far he's come. Listen, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't buy into that whole, first of all, you know, all those movies made money, right? So he is a successful screenwriter. Second of all, he's also a longtime script doctor, so those are not his only credits, Riley. Um, you know, and I, I just, I think that, uh, in a sense, yes, uh, you can say, look how far he's come, in the sense that, you know, finally he got a really great director to shoot something that he wrote. So, there you go. Uh, I also just want to just give a shout out to somebody who I would be predicting, uh, maybe higher up, if uh, the show had gotten into limited, and that's Stephen Frears for a very English mm -hmm. scandal. Um, I I think that um, you know, talk about a director's director. He's certainly somebody who's uh, been at this for a long time and is very well respected. Um, yeah. I think that had the show gotten in, he would stand more of a chance of winning. Yeah, he won the BAFTA, yeah. and uh, he does you know pop up in this category for even stuff like Muhammad Ali's Greatest Fight. Exactly. And, I, you know, just to talk about the other nominees in this category, because I do think it'll be Chernobyl or When They See Us in both uh, writing and directing. Uh, I just don't think the other shows or the other writers in this category stand much of a chance, you know, especially Escape at Denimore, which, you know, could have been competitive for the win, I guess, since it uh, does have enough nominations and was the initial front runner. But they have two episodes in contention. And one of their episodes is actually the flashback heavy episode, which was not, I think it was everyone's least favorite episode of the season. I mean, of course, that doesn't reflect uh, the TV Academy's opinion, but um, I just feel like if they had just submitted the finale, maybe there would have been some sort of chance. But with limited series being down to when they see us in Chernobyl, it's going to be one of the two. And at this point, I don't think either one is a slam dunk in either category and, you know, writing, directing and series. And I think they're really neck and neck. And I wouldn't be surprised to see either one win on Emmy night. And it's very difficult to predict at the moment. Yeah. With uh, Chernobyl versus When They See Us, I, I just think it's kind of a, the night of Big Little Lies situation where, you know, it, it'd be great if the Emmys could spread the wealth. But I think ultimately, once we get to the main ceremony, it's just going to be very clearly one over the other. 
Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, because um, I think that there's um, there's there's enough uh, fluidity in some of these categories, particularly in the acting categories, where you know when they see us got a ton of nominations, but maybe they could split the vote in some regards, and you could see like a Stellan Skarsgård or an Emily Watson uh, win in supporting, or even I think Jared Harris is kind of neck mm -hmm. and neck with Jarell Jerome for best actor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, we haven't mentioned the director of Chernobyl quite often, Johan Rank. And uh, I mean, that's a very strikingly made uh, limited series. I mean, it's, it's very artistic and uh, beautifully shot. Um, you know, unfortunately he has to go up against Ava DuVernay, who's got mm -hmm. history on her side and uh, is of course a, a very, charismatic individual and a talented director as well, I should say. Um, so I think that that kind of puts him, I don't know if he's even in second place uh, since he's also got to contend against Frears and uh, Ben Stiller. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you know, I, I think the Chernobyl is going to give when they see us a run for its money in a lot of categories, even though I ultimately think that when they see us has this sort of locked up. And, you know, speaking of Ben, uh, ben Stiller, he did win the DGA for uh, Escape of Danamora, and that's also an achievement that should not go unrewarded because what he did in those seven episodes uh, was pretty incredible. And the first reaction everyone had was, oh, my God, Ben Stiller can direct or direct to this extent. or And I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, uh, surprise uh, on Emmy night. But as I said before, I think it's between Chernobyl and When They See Us. And I totally agree with you, Zach. I think Johan Renk, he did uh, such a phenomenal job with, you know, making, creating this eerie atmosphere and just setting up the plot so incredibly well. And um, if Chernobyl was going on some sweep, he could easily win. I like how you mentioned Ben Stiller. I mean, it's very important that we talk about how, you know, he did win the DGA award, which is the equivalent award that's voted on by a lot of the same people who are mm. voting on these Emmys now. Um, I, I just kind of had to discount him because of how it seems like Escape of Tanamora is not quite as well positioned as it was in the winter, where it no longer seems like Patricia Arquette is a sure thing couldn't get nominated in editing, for example, after winning the equivalent Guild Award. Um, also in this category, we've got, uh, you know, Tommy Kale, the director of Hamilton. Um, so, yeah, this is a strong category. What you mentioned twice is that uh, sometimes Emmy voters, you know, they just check off the same, the same show in all three categories. And while the drama series field was vastly different last year compared to the limited series field now, we saw something that was, you know, for us very unprecedented, which is that they did not, a show did not sweep last year in the drama series categories. We had Tandy Newton win for supporting actress. We had Game of Thrones take drama series. We had The Crown take um, directing. We had The Americans take writing. So I think sometimes if there isn't a clear alternative, uh, a clear front runner, like in this case, um, I think the categories could, you know, split. They could, you know, reward many different shows. So. I'll be very interested to see what happens ultimately. I'm fascinated to see um, whether or not uh, when they see us or Chernobyl can just kind of like go on one of those big little lives or um, or people versus OJ type sweeps. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, we, we could see it kind of more comparable to like a people. Uh, oh, what was the other? Assassination of Gianni Versace. Yeah. <laughs> I just I can't think anymore. <laughs> um, all these shows just sound the same to me nowadays. <laughs> um, but Riley's, uh, you know, your your, uh, your strategy is pretty good. You know, just kind of yeah. like split it up between those two uh, and uh, just go with whatever you think is like strongest in each individual category as opposed to thinking that they're going to vote in some kind of a big block because that doesn't always happen. I mean, like last year with the assassination of Johnny Versace, we saw wins go to Godless and, and some other things. So I think that it's good strategy to just kind of like go category by category and pick what is the strongest. I have two final thoughts. Uh, one, I'll say that, you know, we're always talking about how the writers, they love their British shows. So I could see how a varying scandal could kind of sneak in there. And it mm -hmm. kind of is a Black Mirror wildcard in that it's 
clearly uh, disproportionately liked by the writers as opposed to the whole Academy, seeing as it doesn't have a series nomination. Uh, but I also wonder if the uh, quote-unquote British block might go for Chernobyl, since it is a European co-production. You know, it's got its British actors, uh, even speaking uh, British English. <laughs> That, that, that's one of my favorite things about it. I was when I was watching the program with my roommate. She says, "These people are supposed to be Russian, right? Why are they all speaking in British accents?" And I said, "Haven't you ever seen a biblical epic before? I mean, you know, obviously anything old timey and European is going to be in a British accent." So. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right, uh, and the other final thing I just want to say is that uh, I do kind of admire the uh, strategy, if that's what it is, of splitting up these wins, because I do think that either When They See Us or Chernobyl is going to sweep all three of them. So if I bet on the wrong one, I'll go 0 for 3. 